Yeah. Yeah, spot on. It's just what I wanted. Morning. All right. On a list. I'm going to warn putting up. And uh, do you know the dog I'm going to want loads putting up there? I want danger money. Any road that's not my work. I put them up where I can, then a scarper. It's the weirdest job I've ever done. Like what we said, a pound a poster. This isn't like slapping up a few posters for a band. This is proper dodgy. I want another 50. Take it or leave it. All right, fine, let's go. <laughs> Funny, what, he could have been stood in the pub with anyone. Yeah, he stood in my pub, man. No, what I'm saying is just like a normal bloke, isn't he? Yes. In fact, you should be a bit cooler next time. You were a bit hysterical, like a teeny bopper. No, I wasn't. You were. You need to chill out. <clears throat> On the way back to his house, we didn't even talk about him or footy. It's like a couple of mates sat in the front. No way, you're making it up. It's not in here. Got a lovely house. What, he invited you in? We well, had to get back to the pub, so I was like... Yeah. Eileen, wrong office. What am I like? No, no, you were drawn to us. Because you miss us. No. Nah. Well, we miss you. No, we don't. You've moved on, we've moved on. We've even got a new biscuit barrel. Shut up, you. Look, look, it's a nightmare. You don't even know where the little rat runs. Well, as teachers go, he's hardly Yoda. He's awful, he's dead impatient. Do you know, I haven't missed you two arguing like a pair of kids. Can I come with you? No! no. Oh, Eileen, for old time's sake, it might be... Another street cars. Tommy! Uh, uh, no, it's... it's Tim. What do we owe this pleasure? No, Steve's not here. No, I'm the, uh, head honcho around here, to be honest. What can I do to help you? Hey, they're up everywhere, them. Saw one on Inkerman, one on Cranfield Terrace. I reckon they're all over Manchester. Anyway, I've got a crack on. I'll see you later. So much for me getting through to him. You reckon this is David's doing, then? Of course it's David. He wants the world to know who killed his wife. He's obsessed. Stupid boy. I mean, if those thugs see this... That's the least of his worries. We need to box clever, that's all I'm saying. Morning, sweetheart. Hi. Guess what? Went to streetcars, I thought about it. <laughs> I can miss you. No, oh, tough. I've got bigger fish to fry, listen, I was thinking. Don't you think we ought to start hiring contractors by now? Just on the way to the site now. Interviewing all day. Better crack on. See ya. Look, I know you don't like him. Fine. Things are really starting to move now, so just grin, bear it, and all the flats are sold, they'll be out of our lives forever. Mm. Still don't trust him as far as I could throw him. Tommy, it's Tim. Found your phone. Do you want me to bring it round? Oh, yeah? When? Anyway. How was your night out with Reed? Oh, she's a game old bird. Have yeah. you heard this? He's a bait magnet beating him off with a stick, he is. <laughs> Reckon Audrey will be jealous, though, eh? You stepping out with Reed. Oh, old love. Oh. Get out of it. Yeah, but the old green monster's gonna rear its ugly head. No, 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 no. Actually, she's asked me to take a dance in our Audrey. Are you taking her to a rave, then? No chance. Your generation don't dance. They just wave their arms about in the air no. as if they're on fire. No, I'm talking about proper dancing, ballroom dancing. Whoa, ring. Take her to a phone party. You know, it looks like they're drowning, but it is highly skilled. When a couple dance properly, it's magical. Yeah, yeah well, you've not seen me dance, Freddy, old boy. And that's magic. <laughs> One bacon bap. Cheers, Roy. One a bacon bap. Now it's in front of me, not sure I can face it. Oh, you sure? OK. Three vodka tonics and a boogie. <laughs> I'm feeling it today. <laughs> well, I'm still clubbing at your age. No, that'll get about a zillion hits on YouTube. Uh, I'm a better dancer than him, but... <laughs> Where was it you went? Zambezi. Well, it was back in the day. They've changed its name. Where is it? Harper Street. Harper Street. Uh, that's moments, isn't it? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, no. Back to business. 
I've had a long chat about this flat, and I've decided to go ahead. OK. There's, um, there's no rush. No. No, I've got my eye on one particular one. Number eight. Oh, nice, nice. So I want to pay my reservation fee. OK, well, I'll have the contracts uh, drawn up today. Oh, thanks, Tom. You've been great. Yeah, he's a goodie. <laughs> you all right, love? No. I'm at off. It's this award I'm up for. Uh, Weatherfield, you know, good Samaritan. Oh, yeah, so I hear. It's fantastic. Except it's not. They've whittled it down to the last three. Well, that's brilliant news. Only one's a flaming copper who does all these fundraising runs and spends the money building community gardens on run-down estates. And the other, this, is even worse. It's a flaming 12-year-old who slam-dunked a basketball all day for charity. They both sound lovely. What chance have I got against either of them? Oh, I think that sounds a bit defeatist. What you did is just as public-spirited. I'm dead in the water. We're all up in front of these judges later today. Hey, I'll get a spray tan. Show a bit of leg. I don't <laughs> think that is the uh, right strategy. I think you need to pull on the heartstrings. Oh, this is like one of them army assault courses. I'm still miles from the finish line. I'm never going to win. You'll win. Don't think I will. You'll get there. Can't keep away, can you? Just wanted to show you and Steve there are no hard feelings here. Put that in your new biscuit barrel. Oh, thanks. Hey, I'm in the wrong job if your boss is anything to go by. Boss? Vinny. He's not my boss. Oh, whatever. I've just dropped him off at the casino. What? Someone is playing silly beggars. Now everybody knows who murdered Kylie. Not the smartest move. Whoever did it. I don't know. I think it's a pretty reasonable thing to do. Seems the law's only there to protect guilty people these days. Nah. Everyone deserves a fair trial, mate. Even cold-blooded murderers? Yeah. They do. I'll string them up, I say. Who? Vinny. Tim just dropped him off. He said he was interviewing all day. Okay, well, he must have dropped him off on oh. the way. I know he likes a game of cards. He's it's frittering not away our money. What? Now what's got into the head of yours? I mean, even I like a flutter on the GGs. It's no big deal. Well, then why did he lie? He didn't lie. It's his private life, love. <sighs> he said he was going to the site. So what's he got to hide? I've got a really bad feeling about this. Calm down. I'll ring him. No, no. We're going to go down there, because I want to see for myself what he's up to. Well, if this is ridiculous, there'll be a simple explanation. Yeah, so let's go down there and see. Come on. No. Fine. I'll go on my own. Give me a second. I'll just get my jacket. Yeah, he shouldn't be on. I've been trying to ring you. Police are here. So I see. We're here to question you regarding a number of posters that have been put up which identify Clayton Hibbs and the crimes he's accused of. Really? There's also been several postings online which also identify him. You do realise this could affect the trial? Why is that? Well, if someone's identity has been protected, it's usually for a good reason. Mr Platt, Clayton Hibbs is a minor which means he's entitled to complete anonymity prior to court proceedings. Well, of course, yeah. I mean, it's his rights that matter, isn't it? Mr Platt, I'm arresting you on suspicion of perverting the course of justice. You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention, when questioned, something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be used in evidence.
Come, Russ. All right, mate. What's with the suit? Been in court. Don't worry. I got off. You got the money? It's all there. <clears throat> Mr. Frost, welcome to Mexico. Well, you don't want a name that stands out. On the other hand, it's best to avoid John Smith. Is that where you're off to, then? Mexico? I see, man. Gordon. Gordon. I don't want to spend the rest of my life being called Gordon. It's worse than being called Russ. Hey. There's been some pretty cool Gardens. Gordon Banks. Gordon Ramsay. Flash Gordon. Just wait. Yeah. Hi, what are you doing here? You said you were going straight to the site. We're not converting the casino, are we? No. So what are you doing here? And who is that? He's the buyer for flat number eight. You know the one with the nice view over the lake? Really? Eileen, this is Mr. Russell. Hi. Is there a problem? This is one of my partners. I was just explaining that you'll be buying one of the flats. Is everything OK? Everything's fine, Mr. Russell. Isn't it, Eileen? Yes. You've got, um... Fantastic taste. I wouldn't mind living there myself. He rang me on the way to the site. We're just negotiating a price. Well, well, I'll, um, I'll just... I'll leave it to it. Come on. What happened to your face? I fell. As I said earlier, a number of posters identifying Clayton have been put up at various locations. Do you know anything about this? Where's my lawyer? I'm not saying anything till I get my lawyer. I've got a number for Clarence, I've heard he's read up. If you want a lawyer, we can get you one. No, no, you're all right. I don't need one. I don't know anything about these posters. We've got an IP address, one of the online postings, which showed it was sent from an internet cafe on Tile Street. Have you used this internet cafe recently? Might have done. It's not illegal, is it? Well, did you visit this internet cafe on Monday, October the 3rd? No. I have to warn you, this is a very serious matter. Whoever's doing this is just handing over ammunition to Clayton's defence team. They'll rightly claim he can't have a fair trial. It's likely to be postponed or relocated. Where were you between the hours of 7am and 9am this morning? I was walking the streets. I don't get much sleep lately. I lie awake at night worrying about my kids, thinking how they're going to cope without the mother. I try and make sense of why my wife was stabbed to death in the street. Do you know what I mean? Come in. Have you got a minute? Yeah. Interview paused at 103. You say to me, oh, well, you know, that's good enough. It's not good enough, Eileen. I told you. Leave it. Something wrong. I'm sorry. It's Vinny that deserves the apology. Well, it did seem fishy. You know, if you watch someone like a hawk and you read stuff into every single thing they say, it's going to be like that. He went to a casino, not the Swiss bank. He was meeting a client and we roll in there like Bodie and Doyle. Mr. Love, Lewis Collins. You nearly scuppered the deal, Eileen. You could see the guy was having second thoughts. He must have thought you were a right nutter. I'm sad, I'm sorry. I feel like you don't trust me, Eileen. And if that's true, it's more than this job in jeopardy. Pat? I've got people to call. I might be home late. Well, that was close. <laughs> so, did you get the new passport? Well, give it to me. What's my new name? Ah, oh, this was one of Jack's favourites, this. Well, come on, Freddy, show us your moves. I feel daft dancing with a bloke. Well, just pretend I'm Audrey. Put your arm on my waist. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Freddie lovey, you smell beautiful. It's Swarfiga. 
There is nothing more painful than seeing two people who can't dance attempt to. Simply disastrous, darling. Well, it's Freddy who's the dancer, apparently. He was just given us a demo. Freddy? Well, he was worse than you. I mean, his surname is not a stair. I've had compliments about my dancing. Oh, really? From people who don't know what they're talking about. Have you had classes? No. But what do you know about it, anyway? Hey, I have won and been runner-up in numerous prestigious dancing tournaments, once at the Tower Ballroom Blackpool. I, uh, I'm a bit rusty now, that's true, but I still have a certain grace. Would you like me to show you how it's done? No, 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 it's fine. No, 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 come on, because I haven't got all day. Here we go, into hold, shoulders down, head up, and engage your core. And <laughs> one, two, three, one, two, three, one. So here we are at the streetcar stadium for this classic encounter between Brazil and their much-fancied rival, Weatherfield County. Remember that uh, Brazil have never beaten County in any of the... Brazil County? No, that's fantasy football. <laughs> Tommy, you all right? Uh, yeah, well, we've only ever got two sides, so it's the news we've ever come to a local derby. Hell of a journey for the UA fans. Well, you haven't seen the trophy. Oh, Cup Winners' Cup. I remember seeing Kevin Radcliffe hoisting this up for Everton in 1985. I was there. Well, what about Tim Metcalf hoisting it up in 1989, 1990, 1991? I was there. <laughs> right, uh, is Steve about? I just wanted to thank him for the lift home yesterday. No, no, he's not, because, like I said, he's only a bit of a part-timer. All right, well, uh... Fancy a game? Uh, I just came in for my phone, but, um... Go on, then, why not? I love a bit of support to you. Hey, <laughs> great. All right. Straighten your back, Quasimodo. For somebody who was in the Royal Navy, your, your posture's terrible. Well, that was years ago. I'm as fit as a fiddle now. Mm, well, I think you should have been in the RAF the way you're winging this. So let's try again. And one, two, three, one, two, three. What, what's all this twisting you're doing? Oh. The secret is to keep your upper body still while the lower half is moving. And vice versa. Uh, oh, pass me that pot bottle. There you go on, Tom Beck. <laughs> now, there are two ways you can open a bottle. You can hold the bottle and unscrew the top, or you can hold the top and unscrew the bottle. Now, that is the secret to ballroom dancing. You have to be able to do that with your body. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. Right. So, we'll try again. And... One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. That's much better. So now we're going to spin across the floor. Oh, all right. <laughs> oh, careful. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh, oh. You all right? Uh, I think I've broken it. This is all gobbledygook. <laughs> I know I can trust you. Anyway, they say you can't go wrong with bricks and mortar. And I know Jenny will be thrilled when I ring her. She's a very lucky woman. <laughs> the vodka? I don't mind if I do. OK. Yes! Smashed it! You've smashed what? I went up before the judges. Ooh. First thing I said was, you're not like the judges I normally go up before. They were cracking up. <laughs> well, that's good. There was this one who's dead fit. So all the way through, I gave him one of my smouldering looks. And then, when they asked me why I should win the award, I looked dead serious and I said, these old biddies, they walk round with reds in the clouds. It's no wonder people take advantage. I'm like an old people's carer crossed with Robocop! <laughs> you, uh, you're all done, Rita. Oh. It's done now, thank you very right, much. Okay, cheers, see you. Long day. No, oh, don't bother telling me. It's going out in a minute. Oh, charming. See ya. All right, Rita's uh, sign on the dotted line. Good. You don't seem too happy about it. No, I am, I am. It's just, just been one of those days. All right. Well, we're going to go and see a film if you want to join us. Oh, I've got stuff I need to do at home, love. All right. Rita, oh. congratulations. You've made a wise investment. 
I just wanted to make sure Jenny would have something to fall back on if things didn't work out with Johnny. He is a boss. So which one have you bought? Number eight, the one with the lovely lake view. Interview resumed at four o'clock. Bet you never left Clayton for this long. Bet you gave him the VIP treatment, didn't you? Well, you might be here a bit longer. There's no development regarding Clayton's brother Cormac. He's in hospital. How come? He's had a serious head injury. Someone threw a brick through his window. <laughs> Find that funny, do you? Sorry, no. It's terrible. People are taking the law into their own hands. Hang on, you don't think I did it? How could I? I've been here all afternoon. Well, this incident happened this morning. What time did you go for your walk? I didn't go anywhere near his house. You know where he lives, though. Listen, we think you made the posters. We think you exposed Clayton's identity. And then we think you threw a brick through his brother's window as an act of revenge. But it was nothing to do with me. We're going to bed you down for the night. We'll continue questioning you in the morning. No, it wasn't me. This is a very serious offence. If Mr Hibbs dies, you could be up for murder. Next, we all know them, but how well do they know each other? The brand new series of all-star Mr. And Mrs. here on ITV. Brand new drama tomorrow night, a shock in store for Alec in Paranoid at nine. And detective Nancy Devlin finds herself at the centre of the most dangerous case of her life in our brand new drama for Friday nights at nine, The Level. <laughs>